Single cell sequencing refers to the application of next generation sequencing technology to a single cell to characterize its genome, epigenome, and transcriptome. In the last few years, single cell analysis actually revolutionized our approach to complex system biology. Indeed, the standard bulk analysis can only get an average picture of the biological details of many cells, losing so the heterogeneity information. With single cell technology, we can reveal biological differences between cells, identifying subpopulations to unravel multi-layered heterogeneity in tissues previously considered unvariable. In this way, we can reach a better understanding of the function of a single cell or a, a small population of cell in the context of its environment. Of course, this kind of assays required a great deal of technological improvement to overcome the limits of handling such small amount of cells and such small amount of genomic material. We are now able to work with a very limited amount of starting material and number of cells. And according to this, we can choose between different platforms and experimental approaches, depending on sample type, system complexity, resources available. One very important parameter is therefore the throughput we require. There are two scenarios. We can work with low cell numbers, so low throughput. For example, in the case we are dealing with um, liquid biopsies, general biopsies, or already um, uh, separated subpopulation of fax sorted cells. And in this case, we will use a plate-based approach or integrated fluidic circuits. On the other hand, we have another possibility to work with high throughput. In this case, it's microfluidics which comes into play. Indeed, this approach has recently increased the analysis throughput of single cell assays to thousands of cells at once, allowing the, anal the analysis of not just specific cell types, but of entire tissues. For microfluidic transcriptomics, with as few as 1 or 2 euro for cells, we are now able to describe the phenotypic variability of a complex population of cells. According to the sample type and system complexity, we will define the number of cells to be analyzed in order to also define the suitable platform for cell capture. Indeed, one must consider the expected heterogeneity of the sample and the estimated abundance of subpopulation of interest. And high cell number, for example, thousands of cells, million of cells, is required in case of highly heterogeneous samples and rare subpopulations, for example, in the case of a tumor samples or complex tissue. In this case, we should choose a high throughput system, such as microfluidic platform. Instead, with the low complexity population, we can also decide to go for hundreds of cells to be analyzed. There are some free web-based tools which can help us in identifying the correct number of cells to be analyzed in function of our biological system, such as the one available on the Satya Lab webpage. According to our biological question, we can choose the specific omic to be analyzed which results in one particular single-cell analysis technique. The available techniques nowadays are the single-cell transcriptomics, genomics, and epigenomics. First case, the single-cell transcriptomics. If we want to describe the cellular composition of a complex system, we could determine the distinctive molecular profiling by single-cell RNA sequencing. This is one of the most used single-cell technology as today, also because it is the most settled among all the single-cell methodics. This approach has been used to describe many complex systems, such as the brain. Most of the previously published data can also be used and inter interrogated through the single-cell expression atlas launched in 2010, which currently includes 123 single-cell RNA sequencing datasets from 12 species. The second case is single-cell genomics. Genomic heterogeneity is an hallmark of many complex diseases, such as cancer, and it is characterized by cellular subpopulation evolving distinct genotypes and phenotypes. 
The single cell DNA sequencing was successfully employed to reveal that multiple cancer types can undergo clonal evolution and to identify founder mutation and subclonal mutation that are implied in cancer progression. According to the previous knowledge and our biological hypothesis, we can detect at single cell level chromosomal copy number variation with affordable cost, but also somatic mutation using whole genome single cell sequencing or exome sequencing, but in this case, an association with higher sequencing cost and higher analysis complexity. Third case, epigenetics. Epigenome plasticity is known to be related with many physiological processes, and it has a very important role in cancer, for example. Indeed, we know that in cancer, epigenome is substantially remodeled during tumorigenesis, metastasis, and drug resistance evolution. As therapeutic drugs targeting specific enzymes such as DNA methyltransferase and histone deacetylase have been demonstrated to be effective in the treatment of several cancer types, this indicate that epigenomic alteration play a critical role in disease progression. With single cell technologies now available, we can profile accessible chromatin by attack sequencing, DNA methylation levels, or histone modification transcription factor binding with single cell ChIP-seq. Let's see how a single cell experiment is performed from a technical point of view. There are basically five steps. When starting with a complex tissue or a liquid tissue, such as a liquid biopsy, the first thing we want to do is to disaggregate or isolate the cell of interest to be analyzed. Because the starting point for every single cell analysis is to obtain a single cell suspension. Of course, the specific approach we are going to use will depend on the sample type we are going to process. So it depends on how abundant the cells are in our tissue, if we want to perform a pre-analysis um, enrichment, or if we want to uh, preserve the spatial information. According to these questions, we will choose between micromanipulation, laser capture, enzymatic or mechanic dissociation. After, after we have this single cell suspension, we need to compartmentalize each single cell into a reaction vessel. According to the throughput, this reaction vessel can be a well of a microwell plate or a droplet into a microfluidic device. In this microreaction vessel, all the enzymatic reaction will take place. So now we are at the third step, uh, when according to the specific omic we decide to analyze at the beginning, we will proceed with, for example, DNA amplification or RNA caption and retranscription, and after that we will start preparing the real NGS sequencing libraries. These samples are then ready to be sequenced and analyzed. And in this last step, of course, the sequencing data will undergo a specific bioinfo workflow depending on the application we decided, for example, transcriptome analysis or genomic profiling. Let's now see how a specific protocol, the single cell chromium RNA analysis, works. The core of the chromium protocol is the use of microfluidics in conjunction with gel beads. Gel beads are coated with oligonucleotides on their surface. Each oligonucleotide is composed by three parts. One is a specific cell barcode, which is unique for each bead and different between different beads. And unique molecular identifier, which will allow us to separate and exclude PCR duplicates at the end of library preparation and a poly T tail in order to capture the polyadenylated RNA. These beads enter the microfluidic flow together with oil and cells. Cells are then compartmentalized inside these micro droplets together with a bead. Since there is also lysis buffer inside these droplets, cells are immediately lysed and the RNA is released and captured on the aforementioned beads. In this way, each cell is immediately captured at the transcriptome level and uh, there are no further changes on their transcriptome. After all the collection of the number of cells we decided at the beginning, 
we can start with the um, proper library preparation workflow, which is very similar with the standard bulk processing. This is because each cell has been marked at the beginning with the cell barcode. In this way, we can deconvolve the information of which cell contains that specific transcriptome at a bioinformatic level after the sequencing. So, after sequencing, we will end up with a collection of reads, starting with a cell barcode, followed by the UMI and the true transcript information. We will use the cell barcode information to collapse reads for cell type, so each cell will have its specific transcriptome. Then, we will use the UMI information to exclude PCR duplicates. In this way, we can end up with the, the so-called digital expression matrix, so a matrix in which we have, for each specific cell, the level of expression of all the identified genes. After we obtain the digital expression matrix, we perform some QCs and filtering. With this data, we uh, use uh, clusterization algorithms to produce uh, some kind of visualization, such as the TSNI on the UMAP. On this kind of graphs, each dot is representing a cell, and the cells which are more similar between them at the transcriptome level are clustered together. So, on a single UMAP, we can see, we can observe different kind of population. These populations are characterized by specific subset of marker genes. Let's now review some practical recommendations for the most widely used single-cell approach, which is the single-cell RNA sequencing. A well-performed single-cell RNA sequencing experiment maintains the native expression profile. Therefore, it is essential to handle samples carefully. Each tissue could have a specific manipulation requirements, which must be tested before starting with the actual single-cell experiment. Ideally, samples should be processed as soon as they are obtained and manipulated as less as possible to avoid cell death, which can lead to loss of some subpopulations and high amount of ambient RNA, which can lead to artifact. There are many protocols available that describe stabilization and fixation methods, based, for example, on the use of dimethyl sulfoxide or methanol to overcome this issue. In the case of single-cell DNA or ATAC sequencing, the starting material are nuclei, so in this case we can use flesh-frozen samples. There are, however, some challenges associated to this kind of technology. In particular, the single-cell sequencing approach suffers from high level of technical noise related to the so-called dropout events. It has genes with no observation or zero counts. Due to the inherent lack of starting materials and inability to capture some exceptionally low abundance transcript, and this is related to the inefficiency of the tra retrotranscription step and the relative shallow sequencing depth we are using in this kind of approach. To summarize, the field of single-cell analysis is rapidly evolving and the direction now is the integration of the spatial component to the description of cellular composition to allow a more systematic description of the complex organization of an organ. Moreover, also multiomic analysis will be the keyword in the future years. For example, thanks to recent technology advantages, single-cell RNA can now be coupled with surface protein detection, the so-called SIG-SIG, to identify protein isoform, detection of low-abundance transcript and protein, and further increase phenotypic specificity. Let's sum up what we learned by talking to Francesca from the Center for Omic Sciences at Ospedale San Raffaele. Single cell sequencing is the application of next generation sequencing techniques to an individual cell to profile its genome, epigenome or transcriptome. The design of the cell throughput is a crucial step in the experiment design. It depends on the heterogeneity of the sample and on the abundance of the subpopulations of interest. We have illustrated the five steps required to perform a single cell experiment, focusing on how the chromium single cell RNA-seq protocol works. Finally, we have learned the recommendations, challenges and future directions of this rapidly evolving technique.